You ever try putting up an antenna with no space, no trees, and too many neighbors with opinions? Full-time RV life is great until you want to get on the air. My antennas were either blowing over. Last week we had 40 mile an hour winds, 17 foot width and 40 mile an hour winds. They're not friends. Getting stepped on by me too. I broke a radio last week. Or starting up uncomfortable conversations. Hey, are you gonna talk to Mars? We've all heard that one, right? Usually I spin those around into, yeah, I am actually. You wanna come in and join me? So I came up with an idea. I'm calling it the screw on solution. Maybe I should call it the screw it solution or the TO Tenna. Let me know down below what you think I should name this thing and whether or not you think it's gonna work. Actually, let me know now whether you think this is gonna work. Then, at the end of the video, let me know what you think. It's gonna be a permanent mount, 3 8 24 stud, so I can put up ham sticks, I can put up telescoping whips, I can put up military masts, I can set up my buddy pole on it. I can put my 17-foot whip up there or I can use any of the available cheap CV antennas. Gotta drill a hole in the rig. Not looking forward to doing that. But what I'm also looking for is a direct coax pass-through. I want the mount itself to also have the coax go through the mounting holes. I've got a solution for that, but I'm not drilling a hole until I know that it works. And I think, I think it's only gonna take me about 15 seconds worth of setup time, which means I can't be lazy anymore. Oh, it's too cold. Oh, it's too windy. Oh, I don't have enough space. None of those are gonna be excuses anymore. It's gonna be screw in the whip, get on the air. Everything else is gonna be set up. Well, that's the theory anyway. But if this doesn't work, I've got a hole in the side of my RV. I've got a hole in my heart. I've got no signal. So today I'm gonna to put it to the test. I'm getting one of those ATU 100 antenna tuners. They're good for 100 watts, about 100 bucks. They're small, so it'll fit the RV lifestyle. It'll fit the small space that I've got. And we're gonna see if it'll tune up on all the bands that I can. And I've got my 17 foot whip, because I don't own the 102 inch yet, collapsed down to 102 inches. So it's simulating the 102 inch whip. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Let's get to it. I'm using the cheap Amazon clamp. I've got it up there with the mirror mount, the 3S24 stud, the coax connector, and the whip shrunk down to 102 inches. I have it sitting right at the side of the RV, which is where I would drill that portal through if I was drilling. So that way I don't need to worry about it's too high, it's too low, it's anything like that. I don't want another hole in the roof. It's gonna be in the side, which is gonna be slightly more waterproof, especially right under that rain gutter. But you know me, I gotta get inside. I gotta get this thing on the bench. We gotta tear it apart and make sure it's TO worthy. Let's go. I like looking at new stuff. I like taking it apart and seeing how it works. This is very nicely packaged. Comes with a USB cable for charging and a little manual here and feet, just in case you didn't have enough of your own feet. Okay, so this is an N7 DDC design, which I kind of assumed that it was. It does take 12 volt power as well as being USB rechargeable. So this is gonna be good for portable use. Start tuning power. The device defaults to manual operation mode. The threshold of start tuning power is three watts and the screen is always on. Okay, so that's one of the things I was worried about is can you use this with QRP radios. The older versions of these tuners, you would be able to do the ATU-10 or the ATU-40 or the ATU-100. And if you got the ATU-100, you couldn't use it with a QRP radio. So you had to get both. Now you can just get this one and it'll work with both of them. Do not touch the high frequency part with your body during high power transmission, which may cause the risk of burning. Which part is the high frequency part? The antenna itself, the body of the tuner, like that's a warning that's not enough of a warning. Using the front tuner requires good grounding, which is favorable for impedance matching and SWR tuning. It is not allowed to tune directly with high power. And that's recommended on a lot of radios is that you turn the power level down to say five watts tune and then turn it back up. But what you might find out when you do that is that if you turn it back up, SWR changes because you're sending more power out. So you're able to get more power, more reflected power back. This is actually fairly heavy. Wow, yeah, this is actually really heavy. A lot heavier than I would think it. I mean, it's not like 90 pounds, but it's not like, you know, two ounces either. If you do put the feet on, these are stickers. So I'd recommend that you try and get them away from the, the ribbing on the case, but definitely don't put them over top of the screws because then you'll have trouble unscrewing it, which is what we're gonna do now. I guess real quick, how charged is the battery? The battery is purple charged. Oh, it's color. I like that. That's actually a really good looking screen. I mean, it's your typical 1.9 inch OLED screen, but it is color. So up to go to line power and down to go to battery power. And it takes a little bit of a second to boot. They give credit to N7 DDC on it. Max is 55 megahertz, even though it's rated for 1.8 to 30. Don't go above 55, even though it's rated to 30. All right, get my handy dandy toolkit here. It's gonna be interesting to take this apart because I, I can't tell if you need to take both sides off or not, so. Two up. 
That's a little loose. Let's try the other standard. There we go, that's better. It's, if it's not standard A, then it's gotta be standard B, which is why you need a toolkit that's got a thousand screwdriver bits in it. All right, I'm seeing something here. I think you can just take off the top screws on the front and the back. Yep, there's that. Yeah, let's just do the top screws on the back. And then you should be able to lift and separate. And they've gooed it. They do this and it's interesting. So there's a lithium ion pillow, a lipo underneath lithium polymer. I'd have to take it apart further to see, but they do that where they glue this stuff down. It's really good to glue down the toroids like this so that they don't wiggle around. So that's not a problem. Boost buck converter over here. We have the, the tune button. It's a momentary push button here. The USB has a toroid on it, interesting. And this isn't just a faceplate. This is actually a circuit board that things are mounted to. So your screen gets power and ground from the circuit board. USB cable plugs in, 180 degree turn through the toroid, and then it provides power and ground to the front circuit board faceplate, and then the battery pack and so forth. The, the charging module here is connected to the faceplate for power also. So this is a, a live PCB right here, not just a pretty face. That's pretty cool. Cost savings and space savings. In and out, the SWR bridge right here. Capacitors down the side, and you can kind of see they actually, like, they get physically larger. And then inductors down the center. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's another one here for seven. All right, I think that looks really well done compared to some of the other ones that I have seen, some of the other clones of this that I have seen. All right, I'm gonna put it back together, and we're gonna put this thing on a radio. In the section of the video upcoming, the display on the tuner is gonna flicker a little bit because the camera's refresh rate doesn't match the refresh rate of the screen in the tuner. It doesn't flicker in person, it's only an affectation of the refresh rates between the two devices. So, looks fine, looks good, no worries about that. Another thing is, like I mentioned in the owner's manual, you're not supposed to throw more than 15, 20 watts at this. The 7100 has a power percentage indicator not a output wattage definitive selector. So I'm gonna set it to 20%. I'm gonna forget a couple of times because I'm human just like all of you are, it's gonna happen. And one of the things that that's gonna do is kind of stress test the tuner out a little bit to show whether or not that really is a problem. The way I would look at that is do your best to not tune at 100 watts, but if you do, it'll be okay. Let's get over and tune this up. In order to test a tuner, you need a non-resonant antenna, and this is about as non-resonant as I can think of getting. Let's get over and get this thing tuning. Right, let's see how well this gets in frame. It's odd because the 7100 is tilted and the tuner is straight. We show a power of zero and an SWR of zero, so this will actually work as a power meter also, and then it'll tell you your inductors and your capacitors. So right now we have no tune whatsoever, and I am going to change this we're on 10 meters. Let's go down to the lowest frequency that, that this will do, which is 1.8. And then I'm going to change this over to RIDI mode. I know the band is closed, but what I have is an impossible to tune antenna. If I key down 11 watts out, and it's telling me my SWR is 99%, and my antenna is 3.8 watts is what it's seeing, and then my efficiency is 33%. This antenna should not tune at all. Let's see what the radio thinks. Yeah, infinite SWR. All right, so I'm gonna key down and I'm gonna hit the tune button. 12 watts, 4.2 watts, 27 watts, 29 watts. One thing I forgot to do was I forgot to turn this power down, which I do often. 4.7 watts, 62% efficiency. It's still telling me the SWR is 3.5, but the radio is telling me that it is happy at 1.5 and it's going up a little bit the longer I key down and we're at 1.7. So the SWR at the antenna is 4.2. Let me try and tune that one more time. SWR is creeping up to two. SWR on the meter is 4.7. We're putting six watts out of 10 out into the antenna. We're getting 3.6 back. Our efficiency is 57%, which makes the radio happy, but it doesn't necessarily make me happy, but that's okay. I mean, I'd rather have a signal go out, then no signal at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the power again, and we're going to change this back up to 100 watts. 25 watts out. Efficiency, we're still down at 60%. 25 watts in, 16 watts out, 62% efficiency. Okay, and... 
With 160 being such a big band, I'm going to go down to the bottom half of the band and see if it tunes any differently. We still have our old tune from our last attempt here. SWR is off the charts. RF power down. That's the tune. So I'm doing 20 watts from the radio. It's reading 7.4, 7.5, 7.6, and it can't really tune the bottom. I'm not really expecting that out of this antenna. So these are these are good results. Let's change this over to 3.5. All right, so 3.5 is 80 meters. Bottom of the band. Reset to take this out of tune and see where we're at. Put it into a mode that modulates. Sideband with no sound doesn't do you any good. Infinite SWR and this is telling me 9.9 .9 to 1 SWR. So I'm going to do this again. Let me check out my power. My power is still at 20%. Tune. Oh, that looks good. No SWR problems. And we're trying to put 20 watts out of the radio. The power meter is seeing 16 watts. The antenna is seeing 16 watts. 97% efficiency. The SWR on here was 1.35. The SWR on the radio was clear. One to one. There we go. Let's turn the power up and see if it complains. That's not the power. All right, power's back to 100 watts. 82 watts out, 86, 87, 88, 89. 88 watts, 90 watts, yep, 96% efficient. And we're using 1.61 microhenries of inductance and 1,790 picofarads of capacitance to bring this antenna into tune. I like it. And again, 80 meters is a big band, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the top of 80 meters, and we're going to try and tune that again. Reset the tuner so the tuner is not in line, so no inductance, no capacitance. And we're trying to put 100 watts out, and we're actually only getting 15. I'm going to turn the power down, 20%. Tuned it up just fine. 20 watts from the radio, 16 watts to the power meter, 16 watts out of the antenna, 99% efficiency. Good. Let's turn the power all the way up. 91, 92, 92 watts out, 91 watts to the antenna, 98% efficiency. I'm still happy with that. Good. Let's do 40 meters. We're at the bottom of the band here. Take the tuner out. SWR is infinite, 9.09 .09 to 1. All right, let's change our power setting down, and then we will tune. All right, I'm putting 20 watts out from the radio. The tuner seeing 16 watts and sending 16 watts to the antenna, 1.2 to 1, and the radio thinks it's got 1.1 to 1. So the radio is happy, and the tuner is happy, and the power is flowing. Let's go back up to 100 watts. Key down, 93, 94, 95. 1.39 to 1, 93 watts out, 97% efficiency. Nice. 517 picofarads of capacitance and one microhenry of inductance. And I think those were backwards before where the inductance was on top and the capacitance was on the bottom. Interesting. All right, let's go to the top of the band. This, this band isn't as big as 80 meters or... 160 meters physically. 294. We're still using the same tuning from before. Let's see if the radio is happy. No, three to one. So we need to retune. Turn this down to 20%. All right, radio's happy, tuner's happy. 16 watts from the radio, 16 watts to the antenna. RF power back to maximum. 88 watts, 89 watts from the radio, 88 watts to the antenna, 98% efficient. Radio SWR is 1.2-ish, 1.3-ish. Okay, so it works on 40 meters. Let's switch this over to 30 meters. Bottom of the band, tuner offline, infinite SWR. Let's tune it. Whoa, 101 watts. I forgot to change the power settings. There we go. 101 watts in, 101 watts out. 1.06 to 1. SWR on the radio is happy. I like it. So let's go to the other side of the band. This is a short band. So this band runs from 10100 to 10150. So this is probably still going to be in tune. 100 watts out, 100 watts out. 105 to 1 SWR. Perfect. That's the good part about a short band. 20 meters. Well, what do you think? Is this going to work on 20 meters? Let's go down the bottom. Reset see where we're at. 8.24 to 1 SWR. Put this back down to 20%. Let's turn the tuner on. All right, 1.18 to 1 after the tuner. The radio thinks that it's got 1 to 1. Go back to full power. Power creeps up. 81 watts, 82 watts, 82 watts in, 82 watts out, 99%. And the radio still thinks it's happy at 1 to 1 SWR. Fantastic. Let's go to the top of the band. There's 350 on this one. Yeah, we're back up to 3 to 1 SWR, so we need to tune again. 
Okay, get tuned up. 1.95 to 1, 73 watts in, and this is still seeing the, about the same 1.9 to 1 SWR. I don't like that tune. Let's tune it one more time. Could just be one of those it is what it is situations. 1.92, that's the best it can get. Okay, let's go to 17 meters. The weird band that starts at 18.068. All right, tuner is in bypass mode. 4.62 to 1 SWR, holy moly. Power's still down. Tuned it up just fine, 1.83 to 1, 1.85 to 1 SWR. All right, let's give it some power. Let's give it the beans. 1.97, 87 watts, 78 watts. Okay, let's go to the top of the band. Well, at least it's 0 0.68 to 1.68. Yeah, it needs to be retuned. Didn't find a good match. Yep, didn't find a good match at all on the top side of the band. Let's go back down to the bottom. That's interesting that it found it at the top, but not at the bottom. 1.93. Yeah, you can't find a good match and it just gives up. And on the old match, it was at 2.26 or something. I don't know if you guys could see that. Let's go to the next band, 21 megahertz. All right, tuners in bypass mode, 6.37 to 1 SWR. Power still at 20%. And the lights flickered when I did that. I got the radio set at 20%. It's 16 watts out, 1.46 to 1 SWR, 16 watts out of the antenna. Let's go full power. 68, 73, 75, 77 watts out, 78 watts out, 78 from the radio, 75 watts to the antenna, 1.49 to 1. All right, let's go to the top of the band. And the old tune won't hold, so we need to retune. It's a pretty sensitive tuner. I like that. Let's get the power down, 20%, 2.2 to 1. Okay, let's go to the top side of the band, and we're at 2.19 to 1. All right, let's tune it again. And we're still at 2.2 to 1, 2.19 to 1. Okay, good. It can handle it. 24, tuner in bypass mode, bottom of the band, 6 to 1 SWR. 1.5 to 1 SWR, that's a good match. All right, top of the band, leave the tune settings the way they were. 1.74 to 1. Let's retune and see if it gets any better. 1.75 to 1. Not really. Okay, so I did the thing. Let's put this on 28 megahertz, 10 meters. Reset the tuner to get it into bypass mode. There we go. 2.78 to 1 SWR at the bottom of the 10 meter band. All right, tunes it up just fine. Let's go to the top of the band. 10 meters is a pretty big band. All right, we've got to retune while we're at the top of the band. Tuned that one up perfectly. 1.13 to 1. That's as far as it should go. It says it can go to 50 megahertz, 6 meters. It says maximum 6 meters, so we're going to try it. All right, so we are at 2 to 1 SWR without tuning. And we are at 1.33 to 1 SWR with tuning. And that was at 100 watts. We didn't really get every single band at a perfect 1 to 1 SWR, but we got them all close enough to be usable. And can you imagine 102 inches on 160 meters? It ain't gonna work. Yes, this is a 17 foot whip. If I had the right ground radio set down and I had this thing fully tuned, it would do 20 and up all by itself without any issues whatsoever. But what's the fun in testing a tuner on a resonant antenna? It would just show that, hey, this, this thing works, dummy. So I'm not doing that, but this gives me an idea of where to go from here for my RV radio station antenna. I've been having some trouble with that lately, so be sure you are subscribed to see some more progress on getting a permanent RV antenna installed so that I can do a radio while I am at parks with tight spaces like this one here where there's not a whole lot of room to deploy an antenna. I'm on a quest this year to get 100,000 subscribers and you can help. And you'll also get to see that video I just talked about. So be sure you click the button right below the video here that says subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. There's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.